that. Today we're going to be looking at calculating the volume of a prism. So we're going to be doing it a little bit differently today. So last few weeks um, I've asked you to look for the lesson, do the answer on pen and paper, then email me in. I have not been getting lots of emails in. Um, so I'm going to try and do it where you do the questions on show, on MassWatch. Hopefully, because you all did about eight weeks on MassWatch, you should know what you're doing. So you watch this video, I explain what to do, and there's about five questions on MassWatch for you to have a go at for this lesson. So prism, as hopefully you all should know, is a 3D shape that has a constant cross-section. So th these aren't all the prisms, these are just three examples. And when I'm talking about a cross-section, I'm just talking about like this bit here, is a cross section because it's the same all the way along there. And this one here is the cross section all the way along there. And this one, the triangle would be the cross section because that then would be the same all the way through. So if you cut it anywhere, be like that. So to find the volume of a pr prism, you find the area of the cross sectional area. So like these two bits here, you find this area and you time it by the length, how long it is. So if we're looking at a triangular prism here, the cross section area is the triangle. So the first bit is my volume, is my cross sectional area times by the length. My cross sectional area on this one is a triangle. So obviously, your first bit is remembering the area of a triangle. Remember, it's base times height divided by two. So I've got my base at five times eight divided by two. So that's my cross sectional area. And then I'm gonna times that by the length. And the length of this one is 20. So hopefully as you can see, this 11 has not been used. Again, remember, you don't always have to use everything that's on the diagram. Right then, so working this bit out, five times eight, Again, this can be done on a calculator, so calculator paper. It could come up on non-calculator paper, but five times eight is 40 divided by two is 20. So then that leaves me with 20 times 20, which is 400. 400 centimeters cubed with a little three, which she doesn't seem to want me to do. So 400 centimeters cubed. So you remember you find the area of the triangle base times height divided by two, times it by how long it is, which was my 20 bit there. So again, you can get lots of different shapes. If you, again, watch this bit again, if you're unsure on how to do one like with a triangular prism, just find the other triangle times by how long it is. This is also, normally I do this on a separate lesson, but this is also a prism but we don't normally call it a prism, we call it cylinder. But again, it's the same concept. This cross-sectional area here is a circle and it's the same all the way through. So if I was gonna find the volume of this, my cross-sectional area, so to find the area of a circle, hopefully you all remember this anyway, is pi r squared. Pi times your radius squared times by how long it is? 10. So, Run that in. Pi times my radius. Remember, radius is from your center to the edge, which is four. So pi times four squared times by 10. And then just put that into your calculator times, you should get 502. 502, I'm just going to do it to three significant figures, so one, two, three. Again, it did have some bits after, but I've just rounded it. So actually, it should be 503, so rounding it up, so it was 0.6. And again, that there is centimeters cubed. Again, it doesn't like me to do a little free. So, again, volume of a circle, 
pi r squared, so pi is just a number, put in your calculator, pi times your radius squared times by 10. And remember, if you're doing this on your phone, just turn your calculator to the side and it should have a pi button there as well. <clears throat> um, right then, so there are two, so you've got a triangle one, area of a triangle times by a length, circle, area of the circle times by the length, and the last one is again quite a difficult one but again it's still a prism because it's this shape is the same all the way through so i'm going to start off i'm going to do this in a couple of different steps so the first bit remember we'd find our cross-sectional area so the area of this l shape and to find that area i'd have to split my shape up so i'm going to go down split it up over area a and area b so area a would be, again, just length times width, four times five, 20. Area B will be three times by how long this is. I don't know how long that is at the minute, but I know this is 10. This is four up to there. So that there must be six. So area B would be six times three, which is 18, giving me a total area of 38. So it'll be 38 times by the length, which I haven't put on, so let's say that's 6. So 38 times by how long it is, which I've just put on there, the question, 6, which is 228, and again, units, because it's volume, centimeters cubed. Again, I do apologize about the handwriting, but sometimes it's a bit difficult, right? So again, find the area of this L shape, split it into two rectangles. Remember rectangles, length times width. So I had area A at 20, area B at that six times three is 18. Add those two together to get 38, times by how long it is, which is six, to get my area. So now you've got, I think there's only about four questions, there's not a lot, but there's some difficult ones on there. On MassWatch, it should be called Volume of a Prism. Have a go at those questions, and I'll be able to see if you've done it there. If you do any working out, you'd like to send it in, feel free to email me, you can do. If not, I should be able to see it on MassWatch, so thank you very much.